why did we start doing this? I guess it was because we were we were bored, or the I don't know that that guilt, that sense of do something with your life. You see it on Twitch. I wanted to quit my job, you know, that that line of work. Be a good guy for once. Be a, be a gamer. So I started the stream. Came here, put on Minecraft. Thought I'd be successful like all the other streamers. My friends, they, they'd be like a community. We'd game, go to conventions, but, <laughs> well, you know how it goes. Why are those digits going down? Oh shit. Oh boy. Oh, you're here for that thing. You're the thing. This is our. The, the, oh my god. I am a. Uh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I don't know. Why I did that. You can't smell my breath. I don't know what's happening. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey. And scene. Welcome. To the countdown, as you can tell by what's happening over here, to the Gase Tankler Gaming for a Cause 5. Wow! What was that? Navi? Navi, was that you? No? No, not Navi. Okay. Anyway, welcome to the, the countdown to the Gase Tankler Gaming for a Cause 5. And can you believe it? This is the fifth time we're doing this. Not one. Not two. Not three. Four, but five. Really big hand. Now, I've never committed to anything for five years. Well, except for, like, you know, the job I currently have, which has been 15. And I've done life about six times. If you multiply it by five, I'm not, I'm not 30 yet, but it's pretty close, and I'm not liking it. Uh, okay, maybe I haven't done a relationship in five years. So this, this, what we've got going on right now, is the longest relationship I've ever been in. How you doing, gorgeous? But let's just say, I don't know, that you didn't know anything about the Dace Man show. Now, uh, I get it. We're kind of underground. We're liked by a few. <laughs> YouTube would say, not monetizable. Yeah, yeah, that came out February 20th. But for the most part, I get it. You're busy. You don't get it. I don't even get it. I don't even know what it is and why I'm doing this. But let's just say this is your first time to the channel. And you're going to be experiencing us for 24 straight hours. So there's going to be a lot of things popping up on your screen. A completely different layout. And for the most part, random noises. Not just coming from Gibby, but also coming from the stream itself. So let's go over what happens in those scenarios. So let's just say you, uh, I don't know, you see this. Yeah, that silhouette. You know what that means? We're on a easy street. And it feels so sweet. That means the world is but a tree. And you're on easy street. Oh, oh, oh. Dave Man. Dave Man and Friends. Dave Man and Friends. Dave Man and Friends. And most likely somebody in the room after 24 hours, if they heard that repeatedly, they're going to kill me. So, enjoy my last game of time. If not, you know. It could happen. But that is what happens if you follow us here at twitch.tv slash Man and Friends. Now let's just say you want to do a little bit more than follow. You want to get some perks. Everybody loves perks. You know, little emotes with Gibby's head on it. 
my Snapchat where I Snapchat feet and random emojis of peaches to you because I don't fully understand what the emojis mean. Or, I don't know, a movie night. Or maybe we'll do a DJ night. Or some free swag. Like, swag. I think I'm using swag the appropriate way. But, if you see this little ditty, in that man's face. And it is Daystacular. Did you think I was going to say glorious? That's why we've got that little gif and song to play when you subscribe. Now let's say today, which is a big one, you want to give us some moolah. We love the money. Show us the money. You see this? The money. Here we go. You see this? Money talks. Today, for the, the next money. 24 hours, or the next <laughs> You're going to see that little gif of Shane McMahon dancing his way out of that Titantron area playing Here Comes the Money. And that means every donation that comes in with the next 24 hours will be going to the Messages Project that helps uh, incarcerated prisons connect with their children so their children know who their family is. As well as the Magnolia Fire Company. We're splitting them this year right down the middle. Half goes that way, half goes this way. So we can fight fires and reconnect kids with their parents. Um, so that's what happens when you click donation. Now let's just say you're a brave soul, or you're not even doing anything, and then this pops up. Some say that might be my father. That's some, that's me. I'm kind of hoping it. Weird Al's your father? That's pretty cool. That means some awesome person in the Daystacular Nation is hosting what is happening right now within this 24-hour block and then there's two other ones there's this guy that, uh, oh, chicken! Pet the chicken, pet the chicken. twitch has their own little thing that's what that is and then there's this guy well that guy me! means that some <laughs> awesome person way more famous than me because it's very likely that everybody is dropped all their viewers into our stream and we thank you for that so now that you got a feel and the lay of the land let's talk about what's going to happen in the next 24 hours so for every five dollars donated there's awesome prizes yeah you're entered into a raffle you could win opening day tickets to your favorite major league baseball game don't have a major league baseball game you must live in canada that's cool I'm sure we can find you hockey tickets. Why not? Uh, two $25 Amazon gift cards. Ten awesome Days Man Show t-shirts. Not just this logo. We've got Gibby's Head on a Chicken. We've got the Charity Events logo. And a few other designs that we've talked throughout the show. We've got a Lunacy Brewing to Company tour for two. That's dos. we got a Federal Distilling Tour experience for two. We have a Dia de los Burritos gift card, totaling $15. Get some burritos. Mm, mm, mm. Un poco loco. We got an 8x10 autograph photo of NXT superstar Alistair Black. We also have an 8x10 autograph photo of NXT women's champion Ember Moon. We got the Blu-ray, DVD, digital combat combo pack, because it's two separate words, of Atomic Blonde. We have handmade... Doll Betty that was donated by Ch Chaos and Cattails. It's a pretty cool looking doll. We had a $25 gift card from Kitchen 519 as well as a $10 gift card for Bakery 519. We've got the Echo Dot second generation in sleek black. And we have a $50 Best Buy gift card. Plus there could be more. Excuse me. Plus there could be more. There could be more. Who knows? But we'll be gaming for the next 24 hours, and we welcome you to join the experience and sit back, enjoy us, and know what we're going to do. And before we depart into this awesome countdown, designated by this clock, let's give you a little brief history, and then we'll roll into the first clock. On February 15, 2014, the day after Valentine's Day, and arguably 
what all our girlfriends hated me on because I scheduled this on Valentine's Day weekend. We raised $900 for St. Jude Children Research Hospital. The following year, on the 28th of February, we raised $1,200 for the young audiences of New Jersey and Eastern Pennsylvania, the actors and future talent of tomorrow, who are going to surpass me by a long shot. Then, the third year, March 12, 2016, we raised $1,800, doubling our first year's total. total word. <laughs> There's so much fun. And uh, shattering the previous year by $600 for the Alzheimer's Association Delaware Valley Chapter. On February 25th, 2017, which was just last year, we partnered with the Messages Project and raised a total of $2,440 for children of incarcerated parents that could potentially be at risk. That is $440 more than we anticipated and $200 more than we did the previous year. As you can see, upward and onward, my friends, as we go to our $3,000 charity goal this year. So thank you for hanging out with me in the beginning part. And look at the countdown. This is how far we are away from checking off this game of thon and playing Twisted Metal 2. And while we wait in this glorious countdown, we're going to give you all kinds of clips from the past five years we've been doing this. From YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, I think we were on Crackle, Justin.TV, or if you're old enough to know what that is. God, I can't believe that's a phrase I can use. But yeah, and maybe even some special nuggets of yours truly doing other projects. We'll see. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here's the first clip. Thank you for tuning into the countdown, and we will see you live at 12 noon here on the channel, however many minutes away this thing says we are. Thank you guys, and enjoy the clip. Children, gather round for another exciting story I have to tell. Swimming with poops. Ray was staying with Nana and poops for vacation. Vacation! On Saturday morning, Nana said, let's go to town and swim in the pool today. Let's go in town and swim in the pool. Oh, I just read that shit. We can take some food and have a picnic. While we're there... Great idea, said Ray. I love swimming and I love picnics too. God, these pages are so tough. All right, anyway. Ray and Poops pack their swimming trunks and towels. We must remember the sunscreen. And our hats. Nana packed the food. Woman. Woman's job, clearly. At the pool, Ray. Come on, Pops. Let's have swimming for lunch. Pops and Ray change into their swim trunks in the middle of everyone. Just saying. No problem. I'll teach you to swim. Come to me, Ray. Come to me. Trust me. I'll take care of you. I know a fun way to teach you to swim. We know how this is going. I mean, <laughs> look at that face. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. Give me your hand, said Pops. I'll tow you across the pool. When he got into the middle, he let go. And said, now swim to the edge or you'll drown. I kicked and paddled. And it made no difference. I slowly started to make my way to the end. And my Pops pushed me under. And I drowned. Nana came. And go, Ray, what are you doing? Ray said, nothing, bitch. Backhander. The end. Till next time.
Chris, and I'm here to tell you that children are smaller adults part of a satanic cult. They're just young humans. They grow into adults eventually. They drank the blood of tigers. That's Charlie Sheen. They have stripped crows of their wings and pinned them to your doors. Maybe in like the Middle Ages for like a plague related thing, but that hasn't happened in a while. They're infested with lice. Depends, but generally yes, that's true. They have what's called a punchable face. I wouldn't recommend doing that, it's not nice. Children should be burned. No, that's wrong. experience been with the switch so far like is it a has been a positive gaming experience or things that you think they can see uh so it's been very limited i've yeah. only got one game for it and it's mario odyssey uh that is a very good game is odyssey the hat the hat oh uh, which um, is the one with the planets uh galaxy galaxy okay. which is a pretty fun game i enjoyed it i i hope they release a mario galaxy 3 for the switch I think that would be a nice draw. This to yeah. me feels like a hybrid of that and Mario 64. So it's like the hat tip back. Okay, hat tip. That makes you cool. Anyway, it, it, it's about the. Uh, it, it's got the feel of N64 where instead of collecting stars, you're collecting moons. I would love, but love. It's essentially like that. that I really think. I think N64, this is the answer to people oh who went. I want Mario 64 or I want a Mario Galaxy. They went, you know what? We'll take Elements for both. And we'll give you this. And it's a really good game. But it's the only game, which is beef I had with a Switch Beta Wii U years before, where I sat on the goddamn thing until fall after I bought it. Your problem was there's nothing really, which is the scary thing is usually the system sucks until the next Brawl or Smash comes yeah. out. Yeah. But the only good thing about the Wii U was it was backwards compatible. Yeah. So everything I collected from the Wii, I can still play on the Wii U. Yeah. I didn't think I got a game until Mario Kart came out that fall after I bought it. But when it comes to the Switch, I like it. Um, I'm not a portable gamer. I have a DS. Is it backwards compatible or no? Little cartridges that I swear to God I'm scared of losing. Even the case is the smallest fucking case I've seen. Yeah, that's gonna be, that's gonna be the the, the new thing after Tide Pod Challenge. It's gonna be <laughs> Switch cartridges. Challenge. Oh my god, I see those days odd shots now. Yeah. Oh god, I don't know who the hell would drink those. Morons. Yeah. Um, but again, I like the system. I think it has lots of potential. It, it, again, Nintendo is innovative, whereas PlayStation and Xbox, you're just getting another system with better graphics. Nothing really breaking the way. I would love to see... Oh, nice player one. Thing. You're in player one. I'm talking my, the one I'm talking about is much older. Oh, the but, Gerard Butler one where he's just yeah, yeah, yeah. Which would be great. Or even the player one is if they can actually like take this because I feel like they are the really the ones that started the whole uh, Vive and the uh, all this 3D yep. um, virtual virtual reality to like even computers and stuff. They're really the ones that started because of the Wii. I have to say, though, if they do go that route, they have definitely made a system that's compatible for it. Yeah. All you have to do is just pop that screen into a device. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're there. Because that's to me, is really where eventually... I, I think gamers want to go down that path. The problem is, is I don't think it's quite there yet. The problem is, is really, with the with what's there, it's like in computers. Com certain computers, high-end ones, can actually do it. But the problem is, is the portability of it is, like, you need... Like the mammoth beast that you need to be tethered to, unfortunately. Do you really want to make VR portable? Could you imagine morons wearing that, running around at Pokemon Go, but on crack? <laughs> uh, you know what I <laughs> Get want? out of my yard! <laughs> what I want is, I, I can't remember the movie, but um, it, you basically go into a closet. Mm -hmm. The closet is decked on all the walls around you. The floor is like a big treadmill that you can make it. When you start moving, I would yeah. run right into the wall anyway. 
Knowing but, my luck, but I'll it, be sprinting in game. Treadmill's gonna stop. I'm yeah. just gonna be. But but if you think about it, um, I would be pissed if I didn't rely <laughs> on my speed in the yeah. game. But but just imagine something like that. Like you basically build a room, probably like eight feet by eight feet, becomes like a whole world for you, and you get like exercise while you're doing it too, because you have to move around and stuff like that. That would be badass exercise. Yeah. I would be so mad because if I had to play a game like like fuck Mario Run, I'm not gonna do well for the first six months. Oh my god, that would be hilarious. It's like I can't get off level hold one. Hold on, hold on, jump. And can you imagine that? Like, jump. you go to tell your friends like, "What level are you on?" Oh, well, you know, you know, I do the Spartan races and all, so like I finished the game, and it's like I'm still on level one because <laughs> my fat ass ain't can't get up onto the brick. <laughs> So it, it's very innovative if they get people to actually start working out. They tried yeah. the Wii Fit first, so this could be their next step. I, I but you understand what I'm trying to say? Like that's kind of like where they're trying to push. I feel like the system to a certain extent, whereas uh, the other ones, a lot of them are kind of giving up on this whole VR. Yeah, the whole VR thing, like the PlayStation Move, I think it was, and the Xbox uh, Connect. Well, yeah. They're not really utilizing it anymore. There's only <laughs> very few games that actually do it, and they don't really. Go at it as much as the um, Nintendo. Hi, I'm Chris, and I'm here to tell you I'm not fat, and you're not fat. It's a state of mind. That's not true. Fat is a buildup on your body, and this man is obviously fat. Weight shows nothing. You cannot see weight. It's right here. I'm not fat. I'm skinny. That's just a lie. So skinny, I make the girls jealous. Not true. Nope. Frank, you for everything. It's your favorite Franks. Frank and other Frank. Listen to them, Frank. It's Frank and other Frank. Being decent and cool. It's Frank and other Frank. Your pair of favorite fools. Frank and other Frank. They whistle while they work. Frank and other Frank. Wait till you see them twerk. Welcome everybody to the latest installment of Franks for Everything. We're backwards. Yeah, you are. And we're here to improve your life. That's right, Forrest. It's Frank. We're, we're Franks. Anyway, what scares you the most, Frank? <sighs> Asthma. That is terrifying. I was thinking more along the lines of Donald Trump being elected president. Who that? Uh, you, wig. Orange. You said president, though. Uh, big guy of U.S. Oh, the black one. Yeah, that's... Randy Quaid. Good actor. Good black American actor. Right, well, we'll get you caught up when we cut here. Anyway, we're going to show you how to survive the Trump presidency with a few helpful tips. Tips? Tips. Let's learn to speak. All right, the first thing you need to do is disfriend anybody who's not white. <laughs> camping! It's not camping. It's the apocalypse. And what the... We got those yesterday. Yeah, I drank this when I'm trying to think. Okay. Well, you bring a good point, though. Get alcohol, because you're not going to want to remember what's going on for the next four years. Mm -mm. Get as drunk as you can. Why are we getting drunk? R because Donald Trump's going to be president and ruin everything. It's pronounced Randy Clay, <laughs> idiot. He's going he's gonna to kick out anybody who's not white, maybe even kill him. Oh my god, how am I going to survive? You're white. Yeah, yeah, nobody told you that. This time. All right, Frank, put on your thinking underpants, because we need some protective headwear. Ooh, yeah, I agree. You don't want people getting into your head. Right. So, do we have tinfoil? No. I, well, I used all of it. All? We had three rolls. Oh, well, my fillings mm. fell out. I wanted to do microwave art. What? Microwave. I had to keep things no. fresh. But no, but, hey, hey, Little hey, Jimmy hey, needed hey. a crack plate for showing, can, though. Can we go back? Can we go back? What? What about microwave art? Oh, yeah, we don't have microwaves anymore. Uh, Did you know that you can't put tinfoil art in microwaves? No. Well, you can. It's sparkly for a minute. 
Is there any space? Okay. We'll live survive. Yeah. Ain't nobody getting into these heads. Uh, close. See, I went with the arch because everybody knows arches are very strong. Yeah, so when they try to get in, they'll just get in from here and go around here and come right on out. Right. Yeah. What was uh, your thinking? Why don't you tell me? I wish I could. Hmm. All right, also, <laughs> next thing you It's working because you can't get into my head. Straight up and out. Next thing we need to focus on is currency because the dollar bill will be completely utterly worthless because they're going to raise minimum wage to $26 an hour and it'd be no better than toilet paper. And it ain't free to look this pretty. Give me a dollar to stop. Oh, shit. I don't have my wallet. Hmm. So you know what we're going to have to do? Probably a thing that's been in our hands for five edits. Stock up on the next currency. <laughs> Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah! Well, that cleaned up quick. All right, now that we've outed ourselves and the Trump Nazis are after us, we're going to need some disguises. Oh, I have just the thing. Shit. It's magic! Mine smells like flowers. Mine's fat and hairy. <laughs> oh, oh, you have boobs now. <laughs> I look like so awesome. Ah! Why are you so giggly? Are you hot? Boobs! <laughs> boobs! Boobs! I have them too! Not as nice as mine. Oh, my hands are going crazy! They're like fire hoses! I can't stop hitting myself and my partner! I, I still can't stop laughing, this is scary! Ah, I think I'm having a seizure! You look like a child molester! Oh no! We have to get that suit off you! Quick! Ah. Well, that was a trip! God, I feel so sweaty. Mm. You're gone. Mm. Yeah, you're hot. So, thanks. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Ways to survive when Trump's president. Mm. Do you have what it takes? <sighs> Let's make boobs great again. Th when did they stop being great? They look great on you. What? Mm, go ahead, say your little thing. <clears throat> I'll say it too. Ah, okay. <clears throat> well, that's been. You know what? Actually. Set me up for nothing. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take your what costume. What do you know with that? Yeah, I'm taking your costume. I had plans for that later. Going backwards. What? Yep. Did I hit it? No, yep. you're good. You're, you're, you're okay. You're, you're good. You're stuck. But you're good. What's up, Dace Tacular Nation? Welcome to another edition of the D-List here on the Dace Man Show YouTube channel. Today, we're going to look at the top 10 gaming platforms. Games are an essential part of everyone's life now, from awesome virtual reality to those classics that were in 8-bit and 16-bit. And we here at the Dace Man Show are going to rank all 10 platforms, because we've only picked 10, and uh, let you know what we think is number one. So if you don't agree with the list, as always, you can blame these people right here. And, you know, without further ado, let's jump into the list and see what we've got. Coming in at number 10 is the Nintendo Wii. Yes, the motion game that has captured all of our hearts and also kicked off things for PlayStation, Xbox, and where we are now with Nintendo Switch. It is innovated truly because it interacted you with sports games, and that's why it's number 10. And at number 10, staying within the Nintendo family, is the Game Boy Color slash Game Boy Advance slash Game Boy. The first handheld world that gave you the world of Pokemon. So that's why we ranked it here at number 9, because it was portable and brought all your big console games right to your hands. And in at number 8 is the Sega Genesis, the first 16-bit game and the system that introduced us to the world of Sonic. Yes, you're viewing videos of Sonic because our editor could not find people playing the Sega Genesis, but nevertheless, we put it in as number eight. At number seven is the original PlayStation 1, and to think, this was almost a Nintendo system. For most of us, this was our childhood around sixth grade, into middle school and into high school, and now we have PlayStation 4. So this was the initial Sony system to make whatever greatness we have today. 
Coming in at number six is the PC. Now, I have no idea why our editor didn't find people playing the computer, but, you know, computer games are everlasting. From Commodore 64 to whatever system you may have now, all games make their way to PC sooner or later. And that's why it's number six. Coming in at number five is the Super Nintendo. The answer to what is next after the NES. Moving into 16-bit, Nintendo brought into the 90s some awesome games such as Metroid, Super Mario World, and many others. And that is why at number five, it is the Super Nintendo. I bet you at this point you're thinking, holy crap, has Nintendo dominated our list? So coming in at number four is the Nintendo GameCube, which introduced Super Smash Brothers to the world, as well as taking the competition to the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. So at number four, you have the Nintendo GameCube. So I guess at this point, at number three, there's no denying it that we are Nintendo fanboys. And at number three is the original NES, the 8-bit that brought us the original Mario, the original Donkey Kong, the original everything. And that is why at number three, it is Nintendo. At number two is the culmination of Sony's work to the present date. That is the PlayStation 4. With amazing graphics, amazing online play, and generally better than the Xbox One, PS4 comes in at number two. Number one, you guessed it, the Nintendo 64, the other system that shaped our childhood. And of course, we're Nintendo fanboys, so suck it, Microsoft. And that is why Nintendo 64 is number one. So like always, I gotta ask, did we get it right? Did we rank it 10 to 1 the way that you think it should be ranked? Did we give too much love to Nintendo? And are you upset that we snubbed Microsoft? So as always, please leave your feedback in the comments here on YouTube.com slash Today's Man Show, or if you're seeing us on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Today's Man Show. And as always, go like us over on Facebook, like I had just said. Subscribe to us on that YouTube channel, and make sure you follow us on Twitter at The Dace Man Show. Uh, give us a little heart over on twitch.tv slash Daceman and friends. And lastly, just check out everything we got going on at thedacemanshow.com. So I hope you enjoyed our list. We love doing it for you, and we love to hear your feedback. So for the few, for the proud, and for the Daystacular, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next week on The Deed List. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another game review brought to you by the Dace Man Show. It is I, Kimmy, reviewing Sub Siege, brought to you by Iceberg Studio and Azire Interactive, published by Heads Up Games. This is an early access game on Steam that you can now buy for $29.99. Uh, this game is a RTS with some feelings of a MOBA, I would say. It, it, the, the characters, uh, you can have as little, you have basically have six units, which sort of play like heroes with abilities. Um, so it, it kind of has like a MOBA aspect. Uh, so, because you only can have six at a time, but it has RTS because it's basically top down like most normal RTSs. But it's not really fixated this game on mining and trying to build a, an actual base. Whereas this game's actually more focused on fighting, like MOBAs are. Um, but alas. This is the game. Uh, let's go into the settings real quick. So we have general, which is basically just your basic language. Uh, your video settings, uh, borderless, vSync, etc. Uh, graphics, uh, which I have mine on custom right now. I had to turn everything down on low, unfortunately, because for some reason I guess XSplit is not cooperating when I get into a game on this. Uh, normally I play everything on Epic, um, but as you see, even on the low settings, I am still going to have a very drastic drop in FPS. Normally I can get this game to run around 50, 55 FPS, uh, but with for some reason it, it, it drops down when I'm, when, uh, I'm running this frog, the, uh, the game caster, but I'm not sure if that's a bug with the game or what exactly but it is there so 
Uh, then we have the sound card, or I mean the sounds. Um, I turned my sound down slightly, all the ambient sounds. Uh, controls, so you can completely remap everything. Uh, there's nothing that in this game that you can't actually remap, which is always good. Uh, I, I did find it interesting that they have so many ability buttons. I'm not a single unit currently has eight abilities, uh, but I guess they left it there just in case if they wanted to go up to that far. Uh, it has a team speak uh, because this game is very much designed to be a team based game. Then you have credits and help, which will take me to another screen, so I will not be pushing that. Um, so this game is very much based upon PvP. Um, so as you can see, the siege is mainly about this league. Uh, I had the pleasure to actually interview the game creators, and we actually talked in depth about this league and how it they plan on it to be interactive. Um, I can actually go to the rules so you can actually read. Um, so basically there is, seems to be just one map at the moment. Uh, so you would have clans or a group of friends and you guys would partner up and then you would go out into the world. Um, it looks like basically how it plays out is, is you're trying to dominate the world just like you try and dominate the world in Risk. The map is actually the map of the world. Um, and then it's basically sort of, I don't know if it's really considered turn-based, but you, you basically would schedule battle times in order to battle to win said territories. Uh, currently, which uh, you can set up to play somebody, and then if they don't confirm or show up at the requested time within... I think he said five minutes, roughly. Uh, the, the round automatically goes to whoever is attacking. Um, I, I kind of see some issues with that, um, and they kind of also see some issues with that. Uh, but that's currently how it's built at, at this moment. I, I'm sure this will probably change later as the game is gets more into development. Uh, the game's probably around. 65 to 70 percent i guess built according to the game designers uh so here are the units so as you can see all the units have certain abilities and some of them match up well with others uh you can actually click through these uh if you like to actually see all of their abilities and what they do some of them like this one is just really just a basic armor upgrade uh, this one is a healing pulse. I actually like this guy a lot. Um, and then we have other things. Power Leech, I believe, is uh, taking energy from them or taking HP over time. So you can actually look through here. Uh, there is regular play. Uh, you can do a 1v1 currently on this one map right here, which I will be playing in the tutorial. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the game does not have a large player base at the moment, so if you're not playing in specific times, it does seem to be impossible, unfortunately, to get games. Uh, but the game is still in, uh, like I said, early access, so I'm sure once the game is fully flushed out and made complete, that more people will be playing and it won't be as hard to find games. But as it is right now, it is not, uh, it is a little painstaking. Um, and then you have custom games, which I'm not really sure what a custom game is because it, it doesn't, it uh, says it's coming soon, unfortunately. Uh, but I assume it's going to probably be sort of like this, but maybe you can put your own custom rule sets in. But we will see. Uh, I'm actually going to play the tutorial right now. I'm going to play the training ground, which is basically just a skirmish versus uh, three opponents. They don't actually attack you. Uh, they just kind of swim around as you build up and then try and kill them. So like I said, this game's an early access. Uh, it's got an RTS feel as well as a MOBA type feel. Uh, so before I actually click OK, I'm going to just point out some of the things that are on the map. So this is your actual currently your mini map. Uh, so all of these little yellow things are crystals. So that's really what your your basically your money or your your dollars, I guess you would say. Uh, so that is what you need in order to actually 
get a lot of your basic units. Uh, then these squares right here, here, and here are considered refineries. So that's this green gas right here. Uh, that's used mainly for more higher tech units as well as upgrading your units. So none of your units actually start out with their abilities. Um, unfortunately, I, I kind of think that might be problematic in my opinion, but as it stands right now, you don't actually get any of your abilities. You have to unlock them. Um, and then if your unit dies, which is also another interesting thing, you actually have to then recreate a new unit if you want it again, and you have to re-unlock through gas that particular ability. Uh, the game to force combat is actually really reliant right here. So this is this took me a while to get used to. So you have an oxygen level. So basically I have seven minutes until I run out of oxygen oxygen and automatically die. So it really forces you to engage in combat. Uh, and the reason for that is because every time you kill something, whether it be these red little fish things right here, which are neutral creeps, or if I reverse them in direct combat, no matter what, they, they drop get, uh, oxygen canisters. And that oxygen canister is really what you need in order to stay alive. Um, and then in this big circular thing right here is your base so you can actually upgrade your base But your base also can't die um, so You basically move a unit with inside this circle and then it unlocks uh, This upgrade I guess I'm not really sure exactly how to call it, but it, this is basically where you will click on a unit and create it and once it's created uh, then it spawns automatically. There's no like build time or anything. It just automatically shows up and then it's your, your unit to actually start using. So you actually can keep playing. Uh, the only way you die is by running out of oxygen or if you lost all of your ships. So I can see just fighting with five at some point in some times and always keeping one back in order not to, to lose the match. It will probably become problematic with oxygen because if you lose a battle, you're probably not collecting the oxygen canisters. So you, you will probably be very far behind, unfortunately. Uh, but that is currently how this game is played. So I will immediately begin to build some units. And then I will select these and move out. And as you can see, I'm running at around 15 to 17 FPS, which is kind of really crappy but unfortunately I'm not really sure how to fix it at the moment but so there you go I, I just collected a bunch of crystals uh, now I'm gonna go and collect this refinery so the refinery is time sensitive so what happens is your units will ro will go to it uh, a beam will come out of them which is basically them trying to capture this node and as this builds up uh, you are slowly building up the capture. So once you capture it, you can walk away and this thing will slowly generate uh, gas over time. Uh, and then there's this extra bar up top, which I'm not exactly sure what that does, if it makes it come quicker or not, but I always max it out. Um, oh, I forgot about that. So yeah, so if you go across these moats, units actually... Oh, crap. Units actually come out, and when that guy can actually just suck down your your ships and instantly kill it, which is never a nice not never a nice time, unfortunately. Um, and then that's pretty much all I need to do. I'll take this. And I'll come back out. Um, so, in order for me to win, I just have to kill everything, and then go from there. So, in most cases, you're going to be just trying to build up a large enough fleet, which is, once you max out at 6, uh, all you really need, and then go from there. I'm going to actually engage this fleet, just so you can see an actual battle. 
All right. Okay. Out of my way. I'm almost there. I can't believe they're actually running away from me. So when I'm attacking, you can then select your units and do things. So watch my unit die. Oh, I already actually collected the gas canister. So as you see, the four gas uh, oxygen canisters actually dropped out from there. So you can just run up and collect them, and it will refill your your meter down here. So I'll show you 50, 50, 50. So I actually, as you see, got several uh, oxygen added in. And then you need to keep this up the entire time in order to actually win. I actually think I lost because I don't think this guy's quick enough to get away. Yes, I did lose. You got destroyed by the enemy. <laughs> Fun you times, guys. This means losing the match, but for the tutorial, you will be revived. So for the tutorial, it's actually going to respawn me. Uh, I can actually rebuild some units. So I'll build these three. Um, so. That is pretty much how this game plays. Um, there are several issues with it, I won't lie to you guys. Um, a lot of it really stems from the fact that the game is extremely fast paced. Um, because of how fast paced the game is, you really can't get your units leveled up as easily as I think the game creators really intend you to. Um, Mainly because you're kind of forced very early on in order to actually engage your opponent, and because of this oxygen level being so low and very difficult to actually keep up, it it does cause an issue, um, especially since these neutral creeps don't necessarily give you a ton of oxygen. Um, I mean, they do give you some. You can usually keep your oxygen meter roughly even, not necessarily overfilled, I would say. Um, and then the, the issue is if you constantly go around like this, you're, you're going to constantly be taking damage. And, and the more damage you take, obviously, the harder it becomes for you to actually engage in battles. Um, and then the other issue I have is the fact that this gas thing um, you basically need to keep it at all times in order to actually upgrade your units um, I do feel like some of the units probably should or at least the upgrades because of how fast the game is should have this gas amount lowered in order to upgrade and do things like that like let me I'll, I'll take my units over there and show you so in order for you to get it up of course I keep losing units left and right I don't know how um, and but in order for me to upgrade my units, I need to move it back into the center of this base, and then it unlocks basically whatever I wish to do. Um, you can only get in most cases, I think, one of them. I, I I don't know how. Even though I like I got both of them, but I don't know how to actually switch over. Unfortunately, unless let me see Q. No W. So it does give you abilities just like that, like in most MOBAs. And like I said, you just really want to kill your opponents. The X's also are another issue, I feel like. Um, now, I don't know if that's just because I'm in the tutorial or not, but if it's actually in the game, I, I would have an issue with it because if you're actually allowing your opponents to see where you are at all times, it's. And if you can counter them by, like, looking at them. Like, I can look at this and actually see the units due to the sonar. Uh, the, I, I feel like there would be issues. Uh, but unfortunately, I haven't actually been able to get into an actual game. So I, I don't really know if this is just because this is a tutorial or not. But that is my two cents on this. Um, so if you guys would like, you guys can easily get this game. Like I said, it's on Steam for twenty nine ninety nine early access. Uh, do be warned, like I said, it is a little difficult to get games. Uh, I have a feeling you probably, if you join in the league, it'd probably be a lot easier to get games because you're really scheduling them. Uh, and as long as you're okay with just scheduling them and probably not playing constantly, 
it would be probably a pretty good buy, especially if you like a game sort of like Risk. Uh, if you guys would like, I'm going to post our interview in the game description below. Uh, you can give us a, a like and a subscribe. It would very help us very much. And I would wish you all to have a good time playing your games. And as always, have a nice night. Hi, I'm Chris. And today, I'm going to teach you how to call out sick. First, use your hammer. No, no, this has gone bad. Why do you need a hammer to call out sick? You can just fake the cough and say you're sick. Show up at your work. This is the opposite of calling out sick if you had to go to work. The commute's half the worst part of the day. Knock on your boss's door. This is not going well. Do not listen. Look him dead in the eye. That's fine. And scream. No, don't scream. I'm mentally sick and bash him in the head with a hammer! I wouldn't do that if you'd like to keep the same job that you're in now. And you're out for two to three weeks. Or like 10 years in jail, probably. You're welcome. You're welcome. Hello folks, welcome to another Top 5 Trending. I am your host, Michael Burhan, of course the Nerd Genius himself. And let's get started, shall we? With 1 million hits is politics. The current POTUS, Mr. Donald J. Trumpus himself, has decided to drop a bombus on the borders of eastern Afghanistan on Thursday against a series of caves allegedly used by the Islamic State militants. The military said that the GBU-43 is one of the largest bombs in the military's arsenal. Though worrying, it does show some political muscle. We'll have to wait and see what arises from this situation as it develops. With 1 million hits, it is, of course, Charlie Murphy. Many are paying tribute to the actor and comedian Charlie Murphy who died on Wednesday the 12th of April at age of 57. Following an ongoing battle with leukemia, many have known him for his skits on The Chappelle Show and his stand-up comedy career in his later years. After being the muscle and double for his brother Eddie Murphy of course, Charlie is a gem of a human being and we at The Dace Man Show will miss this amazing and funny character. With a hundred and seventy K hits, of course, it's Star Wars. Bill Lord and George Lucas have unveiled a tribute to Carrie Fisher at this year's Star Wars celebration to remember the actress, comedian, and author who passed away a short time ago. She will reprise her role as Princess Leia in one final time for Star Wars Episode 8. So that will be something that we can't wait to see, and a very fitting tribute to a lady beloved by many Star Wars fans around the globe. With 110k hits, it's Pokemon Go. Today, Niantic has announced that Pokemon Go Easter event, an extravaganza of course, or as I would like to call it, an extravaganza. See what I did there? As it does use the egg theme as expected, but in perhaps more traditional ways than many others would actually like to see. And lastly, with 55k hits, of course, it's Ryan Reynolds. Marvel's foul-mouthed assassin Deadpool has had his issues with the man known as Thanos. The frenemies and Lady Death enthusiasts have had issues that spawn over time, including Thanos making sure that Deadpool will never die in order to join his beloved. So go figure when actor Ryan Reynolds had something to say about the big bad's current actor, who will now be joining Reynolds as Cable in the long-awaited sequel to Deadpool. He tweeted, Fox. You can't play two characters in the same universe. Josh Brolin was Sicaro, and I was in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> we really don't know where Reynolds ends and Deadpool begins. The two seem conjoined at the hip. So that's it from me, guys. And as always, you can check out my stuff by going to youtube.com forward slash the nerd genius for my top fives and also game reviews. I currently have a review up for Nintendo Switch and accessories. So you can check that out using the link below. And if you want to check out more Days Tacular stuff, you can do by going to the Days Man Show Facebook page, check it out the podcast, and also stay tuned to this channel for more of awesome videos by Frank, Dace, and the rest of the gang. So, I will be back next week, of course. Hopefully, if everything aligns and nothing comes up, I will be back on a regular basis with more Top 5 Trendings. So I shall see you next week, because we, the few, the proud, the dace Do, 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 do,
Dude, dude. Safe man. What's dude. Up? I was watching TV last night. Okay. With my nephew. The one you shower with? No. No. Okay. Moving on. And I was watching this show. Yeah. Dude, there was this gangster. Okay. You know, I know we had our mishaps with Harambe and stuff. Yeah. But I'm telling you, this gangster's the real deal. Yeah. It is. I'm interested. You should totally listen to I wrote a track about it and all. Much respect. Let's listen to it. Yeah. We're getting closer to this. Yeah. 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 This goes down. One of the hardest working members in the biz. Some respect this person. Exactly. Say Peppa Pig, bitch. Yeah. Or Nick Jr. Yeah. Kids respect Peppa. I don't think you can say bitch in a kid's song ten times per second. What about nine? No. So you don't like it? I think you should think of something new. And come back to me Wednesday. It's uh, singles night, so I'll be here all night. Oh, okay. So no one pepper. So, scrap it.